Hello Facebook, it's Natalie with Heart's Desire Spice Blends and we are back with Baked Zucchini. You see, a lot of people have been getting just really huge mango zucchini, like this guy, out of their garden. And trust me when I say there's a lot of them out there. I got this from the farmer's market and I've got another one about this big at home. So they are rather painfully coming out people's ears right now. And what best to do with them than something super tasty that even makes non-zucchini likers like this really versatile squash. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing baked zucchini and we've got a perk. We can actually do this with just about any kind of squash you like and I'm going to be giving you the fun alternative in the bottom of the recipe tonight. So guess what? I need to get our recipe in our comments and I'm gonna see if I can get something out of the way real quick. Okay, that's not gonna work. But I go ahead and say hi in the comments, tell me who's on and we will get this rocket and rolling. So I'm going to jump over this way to get us our recipe. Be right back. Okay, we are finding the recipe here. Got to refresh real quick. And this will come on up. And you got to see what's in the oven right now. It is good and it smells fantastic. Oh my word. Absolutely fantastic. So, there is our recipe. It is coming up in the comments as we speak. And, yep, there it is. And so you're going to get to see the wonderful stuff that's making all these amazing smells here in the blending kitchen. Meanwhile, let's see what we need. First of all, we're going to be needing two, count them two different kinds of spices. We are going to need our Italian herbs and we're going to need paprika. Now you can get smoked or non-smoked, it's up to you. I would recommend for those who cannot handle heat, sweet Hungarian paprika. And it's wonderful stuff, it adds just a depth of flavor that you cannot get anywhere else, and it goes into several of our blends. So, another thing you're going to need. You're going to need garlic, my loveys. And garlic is just one of those, you know, if nothing else works, Add more garlic, it'll make it better. Seriously. So, you're going to need, of course, a zucchini. You're going to need some butter and Parmesan cheese. And so this is not necessarily a low salt, uh, a low salt dish, unless you choose to get no salt butter and low salt Parmesan, which it's out there. Excuse me, can be hard to find, but it's out there. You can do it. Meanwhile, the spices do not have any salt at all in them, and they make the zucchini so good. So, let's get started. What we're going to need is zucchini and a knife. Now, I just sharpened this today, and that's a good thing, because the last time I was in here doing much with knives, they kept on slipping on me. Why? Because they were dull. And I, if we have time, I will show you how to sharpen your knives. It takes practice, or you dull your knives rather than sharpening them. But I may be able to take the time to do that today. So, meanwhile, what you need to do, first of all, you need to cut off the stem end, and a little knobby on the root end. And those just go aside. Those go in the trash, whatever. Then you're going to cut this lengthwise. Not, not widthwise, but lengthwise. And I will show you why in just a minute. Go ahead and cut that baby open. And this is wonderful. You'll notice if you get the right kind of zucchini, the seeds are not very big at all. 
you can eat the whole thing without getting all those yucky, just slimy kind of seeds in there. Get yourself a good tender zucchini. And if you've got really large seeds in there, then you can scoop them out. Definitely can scoop them out. Unless you like it that way. In which case, don't. Right? So, next thing we're going to do is we are going to get our butter. Now, you do want this softened just a little bit up to I would say a tablespoon of butter per face and when I say face I mean this cut edge and uh, it depends on the size of your zucchini seriously if you're only going for a zucchini that's this big and tiny you don't need a tablespoon you need maybe a teaspoon but for something this big or bigger definitely a tablespoon so, and the wonderful thing about butter, it's already got the tablespoons marked on there. So go ahead and cut through the paper and all, and uh, peel the paper off. Just go ahead and cut it into little packs. And the butter should travel up your knife while you do this, which makes it a little easier to handle. And then there's gonna be one stuck on the other side. Pull it off. And go ahead and press it onto the cut face of the zucchini. And there are times when the butter is just a little too soft and it will go everywhere. Let it. And you can just kind of squish it into the zucchini a little bit. And that is a technical term. <laughs> okay. So go ahead and uh, make sure the butter has good contact with the zucchini. You can spread it out a little bit there. Awesome. And go ahead and do that to the other side as well. And you're generally going to want a 9 by 13 with this. That way you can go ahead and have uh, these propped up while they're in the oven. You can go ahead and go for a foil tent. That will work. Go. Basically, go ahead and make a boat out of tin foil will absolutely work. I've been there, done that. Got the t-shirt. It's not so bad. And go ahead and make sure that is in good contact with your zucchini. Next, grab about, well, kind of depends on how much you love your garlic. I love my garlic, so does my family. So one club this size. Perfect for just one of these babies, let alone two. You need two of them for two of them. Okay, and this is actually my hands down favorite garlic press. It is, of all things, a pampered chef. And guess what? It was given to me almost 10 years ago. And it is still my favorite. It is still going strong. So, you know, there are good things about things like Pampered Chef, definitely. Go ahead and get that garlic just kind of smoothed all over the place. And no escapees. <laughs> no escapees. Go ahead and uh, get all the good stuff out of there. Scrape out the paper and toss it. Get back on my zucchini, you good girl here. And... Load it up again. Okay. There we go. There we are. Now, as you can see, now the garlic is kind of clumping up there. Well, we're going to actually spread that out. And that's not a bad thing. Go ahead and spread that out on the entire surface of the zucchini. And I go for the garlic press, honestly, because it allows me a smaller particle size with the garlic itself. And it develops more of that garlic flavor. You see, the more of the garlic that hits 
air, the more of that garlic flavor actually develops out of your garlic. So if you want to be able to spread it thin and just have lots of garlic flavor, you want to use a garlic press, absolutely. Or if you want to make sure you've got just small particles of garlic instead of little chunks or slivers or something like that, then you want a garlic press. If you want that garlic to be really mild, then you're going to want to just slice it and not mash it up much. Um, you know, a lot of people will go ahead and put just a whole clove of garlic into their pickles and that's rather tasty. Me, I want that garlic taste, so I'm going to actually put it through a garlic press. So, what's next? Can put the garlic press aside. We've got that, that, and that. We need our Italian herbs. And I, I believe I said half a teaspoon per face, full of a teaspoon for the entire thing. Sometimes half a teaspoon is going to be, uh, be a bit much with the uh, size of your, uh, depending on the size of your zucchini. So, you know, with a guesstimate, you get guesstimate uh, results. About that much, maybe a little bit more. Depends on how much of that herby flavor you want on there. It's really great stuff. So, there we go. This is a half teaspoon here. And there we go. Half a teaspoon on this one, which is perfect. And so what's next? You go ahead and grab your Parmesan. And this is what's going to trap all that herby flavor into your zucchini. It's going to act like a... Um, well, you put oil on something like that and it's gonna trap the essential oils in your herbs and kind of force them down a little bit. And so you want this well shaken up, no huge lumps in here because you want to be able to sprinkle it, right? And so you guys have got to see this. Uh, let's see if I can move my tripod. Let's see, there we go. So you guys have got to see this. This is so pretty, just so, so pretty. All righty. I'm getting used to this tripod here, so bear with me. There we go. Let's see if I can keep it from falling over. There we go, yes, that is gorgeous. So as you can see, we've got a really nice sprinkling of that Italian herbs. I'm going to do that. We've got a really nice sprinkling of Italian herbs going on there. And then we're going to go ahead and use our uh, Parmesan now. Go ahead and cut the outside like this. Keep the Parmesan from over, overreaching your, uh, your zucchini too much. And there we are. Beautiful. Next thing we're going to do is half a teaspoon divided. That means quarter of a teaspoon each of paprika. That's not quite enough. Okay, and just sprinkle that on over. Isn't that beautiful? That's always so pretty. And there we are. Oh, yummy. Now, the next thing we're going to do there, we're going to put this in a baking pan. And I will show you exactly what that was like. Did you hear that? Oh my gosh, you can hear this bubbling away. Oh, and it looks so great. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at that zucchini. And we also have delicata squash here. Okay, move this on over. There we are, this is really hot, guys. And uh, so we've got our zucchini here, and that's a, what it looks like. You can hear that bubbling still, and it smells so amazing. And right here we've got delicata squash, which looks like this. And uh, so I'm gonna bring you guys back up. We go 
Hello, my darlings. So uh, basically, this delicata squash is really neat. I did a little bit of research on that because a friend of mine gave me a whole bunch of it. And I'm going, okay, now what do I do? And so it's very buttery. It looks like, I'm. excuse me, real quick. I'm, I'm very popular right now from the outside world, sorry about that. Um, but so it's very buttery and when it's baked, it's got the texture of a potato and just a little bit on the sweet side, which is why I ended up going this way with your onions and sweet peppers. Look at that, isn't that great? And that's what we're gonna do with this other delicata squash. And it's basically the same thing, but a slightly different method. And so I'm gonna back you guys up. Do, 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 do. There we go. Taking you guys for a ride there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this aside. We are going to put our uh, zucchini, just kind of squish them over there a little bit, put that aside. So delicata squash is quite wonderful. You will have to scoop the seeds out of this one. And, um, excuse me. Um, and so when you open it up, you're gonna have a nice big spoon to dig the seeds out because the seeds are rather woody and they're not that wonderful, really. And uh, it's a lot like, here, I'll show you. It's a lot like a pumpkin. Now this is a rather hard uh, squash. Unlike the zucchini, the zucchini is a very delicate squash. But the reason why the delicata got its name, honestly, is because you can eat the skin. The skin is so delicate that it, the flesh doesn't come off of it very well. And you know what? It's really neat. I had some the other night. And you don't get this crunchy, woody weirdness on the skin. It's like a potato skin. So here you go. Here's the inside. And it's a lot like a pumpkin in there. So you're gonna scoop those up. Go ahead and just use a spoon just like this into your sink. There we go. There we are. And there we are. Just go ahead and hollow that out. I'm gonna do the other one as well. And then we're gonna put this aside. Why? We're gonna stuff these. And it's gonna be really yummy. So just dig out the membrane and the whole nine yards. And I'm gonna see if I can turn off notifications here real quick because like I said, I am really popular all of a sudden. So there we go. So that'll be a little less annoying for you guys. And so go ahead and make sure all the seeds are out. Nice and good there, nice and clean. Put these aside. Then you're gonna get a small onion or about half of a small onion for these. And I, my favorite way to do this is go ahead and cut it in half, cut off the stem end, leave the root end, and then peel. And you can peel the first layer off without a problem. That usually keeps things from getting too papery. And uh, oftentimes that, that first layer is from really kind of below the paper. <laughs> it has some papery spots on it. So, you know, that's always a good idea. So I'm going to do about a medium fun chop on this. So I'm going to cut to the root end, but not through it up to the edge of the onion, but not through the edge of the onion, on this side over here, on the root side. And then turn it 90 degrees and do a medium fine chop. And I am a messy cook tonight. <laughs> what else is new, right? This is awesome. So, go ahead and put those in a bowl right here. Use your knife as a scoop. Then you're going to get two small, one 
well, two of the really small, tiny sweet peppers, or you can get a really small bell pepper and use only part of it. I go for the red ones, but red peppers because they're very sweet and they, I, they're not very hot at all, but the sweetness is what I'm going for because we've got a slightly sweet squash. We want to go ahead and go with that sweetness, develop some of the sugars. And so go ahead and cut off the stem end. And what I was doing earlier is I cut these in quarters to start with. Now for the really sweet peppers with no heat, you know, you can leave the membrane and, and seeds, but the ones that you do have some heat in them, you want to take, excuse me, take those out if you do not want the heat. So, you know, you know, you've got a relatively small quarters. Cut the whole thing that way. And then go ahead and give them a medium fine chop. here with a few pats of butter on each one. But before we do that, we want to put about a half a teaspoon to a full teaspoon of Italian herbs in with this stuff because it is so good that way. Because we're going to toss it. I'm going to put a full teaspoon in. My uh, teaspoon here isn't going to fit in the jar. And then we're going to put in about a tablespoon of our Parmesan cheese. And just go ahead and go right into the jar for this one. Seriously. Full tablespoon. Close that up. Now that trusty spoon that you just went ahead and got the seeds out with, use it here. Toss those in all that wonderful mixture. Break up your onion a bit, a lot, <laughs> while you're at it. Just go ahead and lightly, lightly push it into the side of the bowl and that will actually break up your onion. And go ahead and give it a good stir. Make sure you've got a really good coat on there. Put it aside, and we're gonna go for a butter now. <laughs> I love butter, can you tell? <laughs> but you can use alternatives, big time. So this is going to be about a half a tablespoon for both of these because they're a very small, uh, these are a very small squash. So about a half a tablespoon split between them. Now a half a tablespoon is about a teaspoon and a half. And so, you know, you, you guys can do the math. I'm not going to do it right now. But go ahead and we can also use our spoon to push the butter into the inside of our squash just like that. That way we've got a nice little coat on the inside. Then we're going to take this mixture, go ahead and mix it up once more, and fill. Yum, seriously yum right there. And this stuff over here is driving me crazy. It smells so good. Put that down, go ahead and Squish the butter down into this one. Give the inside a nice, even coat as much as you like or have the energy to do. I um, you know sometimes I want to make sure it's perfect. Sometimes I just want dinner. So, you know, no, nobody's judging. Go ahead and scoop that in. And, oh. This is a really nice presentation for when you have company, guys. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Ooh. Yeah. You know, Dan Fleming, it smells delicious. I can hardly wait. <laughs> I can hardly wait. So there is that. You are going to put these in a 350-degree oven for, you know, it depends on the size of your zucchini and the size of your squash. If you've got zucchini and squash in there, then I would say a full hour. And 350 degrees will get things nice and tender and fully cook the squash. Meanwhile, 
Oh my goodness gracious, I am I'm popular tonight. I'm getting all sorts of calls and all sorts of stuff. I'm gonna have to call people back. But anyway, I'm so, anyway, you guys have gotta look at this again. This pan took about an hour to get fully done. It smells amazing. Nothing's burned. <laughs> That's a plus, right? And you've got a nice, delicate uh, zucchini in there. Um, if you want your zucchini to be a little bit more on the crunchy side, you're going to put this in for about half an hour, not, not the full 60 minutes. If you want it somewhere in between, it's probably going to be closer to 45 minutes. Now, if you've got really small squash, you're going to cut your time quite a bit so uh depending you know you're gonna stick a fork in there and see if it's done Just check your texture check your texture with a fork and that's my best that's really my best suggestion for you if you've got a bigger squash it's gonna take a little longer but i'll tell you feeding a crowd with this is really good what happened here there's a story to this recipe when i was in high school we uh for some reason we planted five zucchini plants and several tomato plants. Well, our garden plot was very well fertilized. We had rabbits and chickens and horses and goats and we put it just all in the garden plot and we just let it cook for a while. Well, by the time we were getting our zucchini and stuff like that, they were going bonkers. We were getting a zucchini this big every single day. And so soon we're going, what do we do with all this zucchini? And how do we make it taste like, not zucchini. <laughs> That's where this was birthed. Meanwhile, I, we've got a friend right now whose garden is in an overload. Gave us, gave me one of these zucchinis, um, bigger than the one over here, and a bunch of delicata squash, a pat of pan, a beautiful pie pumpkin. I'm gonna have to show you guys what to do with your pumpkins real soon. And I'm, um, so, you know, I said, hey, people's gardens are going in overload right now. Best show them this stuff before they never want zucchini again, ever. So, anyway, that's what we've got for tonight. And uh, I'm going to check the time real quick, see what we got. Okay, beautiful. Now, given this, I can do just real quick on how to sharpen your knives. But do be careful with this, okay, guys? Now... I've done this with traditional whetstones. This is my favorite. You can tell it's well-loved. It's pretty warm. But this one and this one are my absolute favorites. This, is, this one is what I use to sharpen my sewing scissors with. Many of you know that I used to be a custom seamstress. But this is actually for fishing knives and fish hooks and stuff like that. You can also get traditional whetstones. And this is a uh, this is a diamond whetstone. Uh, basically, what they do is they go ahead and crush up diamonds and and adhere them to the metal. I don't know how they do that, but let me go ahead and get you a dull knife, and I will show you some of the tricks. So, this one. Last I checked was pretty dull. Yep. And so you want to wet it and your whetstone down. That's why they're called a whetstone. And if you look closely at your knives, you notice there's an angle right here at the edge. There you go. You can see it right there. Now you're going to turn the knife so that it scrapes the entire angle against the whetstone. And so that is, you know, if you are off on that angle, you get a dull knife. If you're right on, you get a very sharp knife or can get a very sharp knife, depending on the blade and how good the steel is. If it's a dull knife with really great steel, you're going to be there for a while because, but that edge will never wear off. <laughs> So, you're going to match that edge, that angle, and make that angle flat on your whetstone. And bring it across, matching the angle even over this curve right here. This curve right here, you've got to match that angle even on the curve. 
bring it down, and that's why I do this, is to match the angle on the curve. Bring it down, match the angle, do it again, just like that. So this is gonna take some practice for those of you who don't know how to do it yet. And uh, you're gonna have some pretty dull lines to start with, but once you get the hang of it, you'll be able to feel that angle and feel whether or not it's on the whetstone or, or sharpening stone uh, correctly or not. And then you do the other direction. Be really careful coming towards you, Shelf. Be really careful. Don't put a ton of force on this because if you slip, you're in trouble. Okay, go ahead and make sure that the angle, the sharpening angle of the blade is in full contact with that whetstone the entire time. And there you go. And you should have a much sharper blade that will catch the, uh, catch your thumbprint very, very easily and you feel it catching the ridges on your thumbprint. And some of them will, even though they're kind of dull, the more it catches it, uh, the better it is. So there you have it. And from Heart's Desire to your home, we have great zucchini and really good stuff, plus how to sharpen your knives. Have a great one, and we will see you later. Keep things tasty.